What you guys got another video here for you. Can you mix and match different uh, brands of RAM? That's what we're going to be talking about in this video. So the short answer is you really shouldn't do it because you're going to end up with a load of headaches in the future. So it's just not worth it. So we've got some A data in here. This is 3600 megahertz speed. And again, uh, this is a modern day uh, DDR4 memory. You can see it's XPG A data memory. Now, if I went to mix this with other memory, I would have to try to match uh, the type of memory that I've got in here, which is the voltage, which is 1.35 volts. I would then have to match the timings and the cast latency and all of these things to make it play well together. Now, Intel is a little bit more forgiving when it comes to mixing and matching different brands of RAM I've found over the years, but AMD is a little bit more finicky with different brands of RAM when you mix and match them and you could run into crashing and blue screen of death. So it's just not worth trying to mix and match RAM and hopefully you have trouble free uh, computing because this is what it all comes down to. If they're different sticks of RAM, they're going to have different speeds, different profiles, different heights. Uh, this may cause problems with different coolers. Also, you're going to have different voltage there and also XMP might not play well with different types of RAMs. Also two different types of makers of RAM not, might not play well together. Sometimes you mix and match RAM and it can be a bit problematic, uh, but sometimes you can get away with it and it does work. So what is the right thing to do? Well, the right thing to do is just don't mix and match. It's that simple. The best thing to do is go on, on the internet and look for the kit of RAM by searching the label and this will help you find the right kit for your PC. It's very easy to do. You can use CPU-Z to get information about the memory as well, uh, but using the label is probably the best and easiest way to go about searching for that particular RAM, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Now, to answer the question for those in the comments section that are going to say they have mix and match memory uh, in their PC and it works perfectly fine, then sometimes he can get away with it and it does work, but it doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. So we've got a variety of different memory here. I know some of them are DDR3 because we know DDR3 doesn't work with DDR4 and DDR2 don't work with DDR3 or DDR4. We know that, but I'm just looking at the different types of memory here. Just assume that these are all DDR4. Why would you want to mix and match these particular types of RAM? It just doesn't make any sense why you'd want to go ahead and do that. Now, I can understand sometimes you might have a memory kit inside your PC and one stick is gone bad and you need to replace that memory. Well, you need to go ahead and try to find a, a kit of memory that has the same number on it. And I'll show you how to do a search for that in a second. But really, you don't want to mix and match memory because you can run into blue screens and crashing problems. And sometimes you can't even get the system to boot. So like I said, you have to make sure that you've got all of the things uh, aligned, i.e. the RAM size needs to fit in the case properly. You also need the speed to be matching. Otherwise, you're going to have restricted speed if you've got different types of speeds in there. Also, cache latency and also timings. Uh, you won't be able to use XMP with different types of memory with different speeds and, and uh, also voltage in there is another key problem that you're going to run into if your voltage is different for each one of them. So just bear that in mind when you're buying RAM or you're looking to replace RAM. Try to find memory kits that are all the same, and I'll show you how to do that right now. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can find memory online and try to match the memory that we have in our system. So you can see a long number here. We need to do a search for this on Google, and basically we need to try and find a seller that is selling kits of RAM with that number on it and that way we can uh, buy match paired RAM. So if you want to upgrade or replace any memory that's failed, you can do that by doing this method here. You can also use software to find all of this information about the memory if you don't have a sticker on your RAM, but basically you need to do a search like I show you here. So you put the name and model and also the number inside Google and do a search and basically you will find a site and you can see this is identical RAM. I can now buy this RAM and I can upgrade and add more memory to my system. It's very simple and easy to do. So there's no need to use different brands of RAM or even different speeds or different timings or different voltage, which is all going to add to the headache that you may have if you do that. 
you can end up with a system not even booting up or even just the occasional blue screen of death where you're just causing issues to your system. Memory is a really complex thing and if you start messing around with it, it can cause a lot of problems if you don't uh, try to use match paired RAM or the same type of RAM. So you can see here it has found the Corsair Dominator Platinum memory as well. That means I could go ahead and buy this and put it into my system and have match paired memory matching the memory that I've already got. So that is how you can go ahead and replace your memory or add memory to it if you need to. Now, if you can't find the same number, you might find the same memory, but have a different number on it. And then sometimes that does happen. And if that is the case, as long as you're using the same brand of memory, the same type, but just a little different batch number, then I don't think you're going to have so much of a problem compared to using a completely different brand, say, for instance, like gel with Corsair. It just might not play well together and they may be all different timing speeds and everything else, which will obviously cause problems in the long run. So I hope this answers all of your questions. If you have any other questions like these, then you can always add them in the Discord server. It's free to join. You can add your video requests over there. And if I think it's worthy of a video, I'll go ahead and make that video for you. Plus, it also answers some of your questions. This was a pretty good one. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. Just want to say a big special thanks to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate it. Have a great weekend. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall see you again for another video real soon. Thanks again for watching and thanks for your continued support. Bye for now.